If you've ever had the suspicion that school programmed you to live a mediocre life, it programmed you to live a life that was far below your true potential, then you're absolutely right. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how formal education does this by design. So if you're the kind of person who is very emotionally attached to the value of education as it's pushed on us from the various propaganda outlets of our society, and you're not willing to have an open mind, then this video is going to be very triggering for you. So I recommend you stop watching now. Now I've been through a lot of school. I graduated from high school because that's what everyone told me I should do. And then I went to college because that's what everyone told me I should do. And then for the year after I graduated with my bachelor's degree, I couldn't find a job anywhere. I was stuck at home, miserable and depressed. And then after a year of not finding a job, uh, I decided to go back to school again to get a master's degree because for some reason I thought that if, you know, 12 plus four years of school that I had taken already had failed me, for some reason I thought that another two years of the same failed strategy was going to work. So I definitely have enough experience with school to know what I'm talking about. And when I talk about school, by the way, I'm talking about kindergarten through 12th grade. I'm also talking about college, right? The whole formal education system is kind of works the same way. Now I've identified six different ways. There's probably more, but I've identified six ways that school will program you for failure for the rest of your life. And I really mean programs because you learn your habits, you learn your mindsets, you learn your beliefs, there's so much that you learn from a very young age when you really don't have the mental resources to recognize whether or not whether you're learning is for your own interest. You are brainwashed from a very young age with whatever the school system and the people that rule the school system happen to think is useful for the population to be brainwashed with. The first reason that school programs you for failure is because it's boring. And it doesn't matter who you ask, right? If you ask a straight A student or the failure student or the, the average B or C student, right? They'll all tell you the same thing. They'll all tell you that school is boring. Why? Because school is boring. And that's not an accident, by the way. It's boring by design. School is boring because the people who program the curriculum for the school are the people who want to program the minds of young people to prepare them to be factory workers. They believe that it is the lot in life for most of the population to stand or sit in one place and do some boring repetitive job over and over and over again for most of their waking hours of their adult life. Children don't take to this easily. Children love to learn. I mean, if you've ever been around a child, children are full of curiosity. They always want to learn, but they want to learn the things that are interesting to them. And they want to be active and run around and, and use their childish energy. So in order to convert those free spirited, happy, curious children into mindless factory workers, they have to force them into a very boring situation for many hours at a time. And it's done gradually too, so they can suck the life out of these kids progressively. If you think about like a preschool, uh, it's only a few hours, they're allowed to play a bunch, and then in kindergarten, they have to sit down a little bit more. It's, it's less hours, they get a long recess, and then by the time they're in like sixth or seventh grade, recess is maybe 15 minutes, or maybe they get rid of it entirely. Maybe they find some excuse about how playing outside and playing sports and playing on the jungle gym is too dangerous, so they can't let kids do that. So school gets more and more boring along the course of the kid's childhood as his life gets sucked out of him gradually so that he can be a better factory worker, a better office drone. There are a million ways that they could make school interesting. They could make learning fun because learning is naturally fun, right? The reason that our society believes that learning is boring is because we equate learning with school. And children obviously learn better when the learning is done in a way that's fun, but the school system has never and probably will never make learning fun even though it would be easy to do because that would defeat the real purpose. School also programs people to mindlessly follow directions. You do whatever the teacher says to do. You sit down and listen or you do the, the work on workbook page 45 that the teacher tells you to do the work on workbook page 45 and then when you hear a bell ring then you obediently get up and go to your next class. They're conditioning you such that they don't even have to give you the commands. They just play a noise and you obey. You know what the noise means. And so they don't even have to waste two seconds of their breath telling you what to do. That's great if you want to be the perfect factory worker, the perfect office drone. But if you want to make something of your life, uh, then you need to be proactive, right? You need to not just follow directions. You need to figure out on your own 
what you're gonna do to make your dreams and your goals a reality. It's something I talk about a lot in this video, about how if you just follow other people's directions, as you've been programmed to for your entire childhood, and probably you're still carrying around that programming, then you're never gonna make anything of yourself because nobody is ever going to give you the directions that you need to become great. If you're ever gonna do something meaningful with your life, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own. Nobody's gonna tell you what to do. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, please do me a favor, hit the thumbs up icon so the YouTube algorithm likes me more. Hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And share this video with somebody who thinks that school is a great idea. Now, school also programs you for failure because it teaches you to mindlessly accept information that is given to you. If you think about how you're graded in school, they give you some information. They say, here's some information, and then your score is based on how well you repeat that information back to them. There's no understanding and there's no critical thinking involved. And if you happen to disagree with some of the so-called facts that the school teaches you, well, then you just get the question wrong, right? You just get bad grades. And so naturally, most people never learn to think critically. They never learn how to analyze arguments, analyze so-called facts, and see whether or not they actually fit the evidence. We're not taught to do that in school. We're taught to accept things completely on faith. I remember in my junior year of high school, I was in an AP history class, and the teacher decided to do a little exercise where we would take something that we had learned in the history book, and then we would, we would be divided into different sides and, and we would debate different positions on different points. And this was something that, that I, I give full credit to that particular teacher because this was actual critical thinking skills, but this is something that was completely out of place in my school curriculum and the, the kid's response completely showed it. I mean, nobody had a clue how to do this exercise. Nobody had any clue how to analyze the positions based on their merit. I still remember the debate position that I was given, which was that the New Deal was not what saved us from the Great Depression. Now, the New Deal is the, the government measures that the American government put in place, specifically Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, during the time of the Great Depression, it was a whole bunch of new government programs that were aimed at recovering the economy. And so the textbook had done nothing but heap praise upon FDR and the New Deal about how this was the most amazing thing that saved us from the Great Depression. And there, there was no contrasting viewpoint in the textbook. So I had been told that I have to argue against this, that I have to argue the point that it wasn't such a good idea. And I was the only one who was sort of able to do the exercise. And it was difficult for me even, which it shouldn't have been. If you think about it, that this New Deal program turned what was a one-day stock market crash into a 10-year-long depression. It's unbelievably stupid what the textbooks are trying to force down our throats if you really think about it for more than a second, but that's the problem is we weren't taught to think. They tell us the, the New Deal was great, the New Deal was good for America, the New Deal saved us, even though it totally failed at that time and it's still causing massive problems in our economy to this day. But the point is, this exercise was, this was among uh, juniors in high school. These are 16, 17 year old kids who are in an AP class. So this is like the best, the smartest kids in the whole school, in like a nice school district at that. And they were completely incapable of doing this exercise because that's what school trains you to do. It trains you to take orders, follow directions, and to believe what you're told without questioning it. And so once in a blue moon, when you actually have a teacher who has the student's best interests in mind, and she asks you to actually critically analyze a position given to you by the textbook, well, you're, you're incapable of doing it. At 16 years old, you've been in school for 11 years. You've had 11 years of brainwashing telling you to just believe what you're told. And if you carry that into your adult life, as most people do, then you're gonna have a very bad time and you're not really gonna be able to do much of anything with your life because in order to do anything out of the ordinary, you need to be willing to believe things that are out of the ordinary. And then another reason that school programs you for failure, conveniently, is that a lot of what school teaches is a lie. 
or at least used to be considered true, but now is completely out of date and has been refuted. I gave you the example of the Great Depression, but I have a whole bunch of other examples. I remember the teacher told us that the, the dating system, the AD and BC, well, uh, that wasn't real, that it was really CE for current era and BCE for before current era, and then the Christians had come along later and tried to Christianize it and, and made BC for before Christ and AD for after death and that Jesus lived in the, the time period between B.C. and A.D., and that was the, the revised, Christianized version of the brilliant secular scholars who had come up with this B.C.E. and C.E. dating system originally, and I, I won't bother going into how ludicrously wrong that is. But anyway, school tries to kind of remove any trace of religion from its curriculum, even though religion is integral to the human experience, because religion uh, kind of gets in the way of their agenda of turning everyone into mindless factory workers. And a lot of the science they still teach has been completely disproven or is completely out of date. You know, just the other day I was watching a video by Greg Braden, who's a scientist, and he was talking about a conversation that he had with a friend of his who is a biology professor at a college. And the, the biology professor said they were still teaching that humans evolved from Neanderthals. and uh, some six or seven years ago, uh, DNA evidence came out to prove that that was not true, that human, modern humans were not evolved from Neanderthals at all, but the, the school curriculum still teaches it. And he asked the, the professor friend of his why he didn't update the curriculum, because he knew that this had been disproven, that this, what he was teaching was false. And the friend said, oh, well, uh, if, we had to, if we updated the curriculum, then we'd have to get new textbooks. And he said, well, why don't you just get new textbooks? And the professor said, oh, well, then I'd have to update all the class notes. So this is the attitude of academia. They do not care that they are teaching you lies. If it would take them a little bit of effort to actually update their material to be teaching you the truth instead of teaching you lies, they would prefer to continue to teach you lies. That's how school works. Now, in addition to teaching you blatant outright lies, school curriculum excludes those subjects that would be most actually useful for you in your life. If you think about personal finance, for example, you know, a lot of people think that they should go to school because if they go to school and get good grades, then they can go to more school and get more good grades and then they'll get a good job, right? They're going to school because they want to make money. It's a very practical concern, it makes sense, but the school resolutely refuses to teach them what they need to know to make money. School does not teach you how to get a mortgage. It doesn't teach you how to get a bank loan. It doesn't teach you how the economy works in a way that you can get the job that pays the highest amount of money. You know, I did this special report called The Simple Economics of Making More Money that I wrote uh, about my, my experience in economics coupled with my real world experience. I came up with a formula that determines how much money you make in any job or any business. And it's a very simple formula. It's only four pieces and you can understand it in like 10 minutes, right? A 12 year old could understand this and it takes like 10 minutes to read this thing. You can download it for free if you want. I'll put a link down there in the description. But the point is that this would be so easy for them to teach and it would be so useful, but they don't. In the same way, they don't teach you anything about purpose and meaning. They don't teach you about spirituality. They don't teach you about philosophy because you're not supposed to think about those things. You're just supposed to be a peon in a factory or an office somewhere. You're not supposed to think about what is your ultimate purpose. You're not supposed to think about why God put you on this earth, why you were created in this life, and what your human potential really is. No, if you knew those things, you'd stop working in the stupid factory, wouldn't you? Now, the final way that school programs you for mediocrity is that it chooses mediocre people to teach you. Being a school teacher is a lower middle class profession, and if you learn from school teachers, you learn their lower middle class ideas to the extent that they teach you their own ideas. Most of the time, they're just regurgitating the ideas that the government wants them to teach. But if you want to make something of your life, then you have to learn your information, you have to learn your beliefs, you have to learn your habits from the sort of people that are successful in their lives. If you want to learn to be a lower middle class government worker, then learn from teachers. And I don't mean to put down teachers, I mean teachers are products of this same system. Right? The people who stay in school and have no idea 
what else to do with their lives because they haven't been taught to be proactive. They, they haven't been taught to choose what to do with their own lives. So they just say, okay, well now I can't go to school, so maybe I'll teach you to school. Yeah, college professors are the worst at that, right? They, they grow up till uh, high school and they graduate high school and then they go get their bachelor's degree and then they have no idea what to do after that, so then they go get a master's degree. They have no idea what to do, go do after that, so they go get a PhD. They have no idea what to do after that, so they get a job at the college, right? They, their world never extends beyond the college. And these are the people that we hold in very high esteem, by the way, which is absurd. I mean, I have three certificates of mediocrity. One from high school, one from bachelor's degree, and one from a master's degree, and I do not expect to be respected because of that. I'd expect pity, if anything. Now, I realize I've just kind of been ranting the whole time about school and why school sucks, so I'll give you a little positivity at the end here and tell you what you should do instead. I mean, you know, probably it's too late for you if you're watching this video. Probably you've already been thoroughly brainwashed and follow my channel because I'll give you a lot of resources to teach you how to unbrainwash yourself and rebrainwash yourself in a way that you can reach your full potential and lead a meaningful life. So the two things that work much better than school are one, the internet, and two, work. And you could say three, homeschooling, but that kind of depends on the parents. So uh, I'm gonna focus on the first two because you can change those yourself. But if I had kids, I certainly wouldn't trust them with the public school system or probably even private schools, right? Because private schools all have to get accredited, which means that they have to be approved by the government, which means that they're teaching the same crappy curriculum or else the government won't approve them. Anyway, so there's a ton of super valuable, super interesting, super meaningful things that you can learn for free or for very low cost compared to like college on the internet, which I talk about a lot. Like in this video, I talk about five of the most high value skills that you can possibly have that you can teach yourself for free. And the second way is to work, is to actually do it, actually get the experience, you know? Become an apprentice with somebody or just learn something on the internet and go try it for a while. I've got this guy that's managing my Instagram for me. He's 17 years old and he bought a course about how to sell on Instagram. It's kind of an expensive course. It costs like $1,000, which if you think about it in comparison to college, which costs you like in upwards of $100,000, it's nothing. But this kid is 17 years old and he's learning to sell over social media and he's getting a ton of experience doing it at 17, learning from a guy who's an internet millionaire who's created this course. I mean, how much better is his education gonna be than mine uh, going for four years to a stupid college and then going for two years to another stupid college to get a master's degree so I can feel good about myself. Right? I wish I had done what this guy is doing because he's doing everything right. He's learning on the internet from the people who are actually successful instead of some lower middle class teacher in a school and he's actually putting in the work to get the experience to realize what works and what doesn't. And he's learning to sell, which is one of the most high value skills you can possibly have. So anyway, if you hate me for this video, please tell me in the comments below. I always love to hear your feedback. And nothing against you if you're a teacher or a school administrator. I know that not all teachers are bad and not all school administrators are bad. And some people really do have the interest of the kids in mind, even if the system doesn't. And that's my problem is with the system, not with each individual within the system. So I thought I'd offer that disclaimer because I don't want to falsely incriminate anybody. But if you're interested in learning how to learn on the internet, maybe you haven't really been taught how to learn, right? Because school is terrible about teaching you that. Uh, check out this video all about the seven step process that you need to learn a high income skill that you can teach yourself on the internet. And of course, hit the subscribe button if you want to lead a full and free life and hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all the content I'm putting out in the future.